Welcome back to Anime Savants, everyone. This week I am Sophie. Oh, uh, this week I'm Aerie. Ah! Okay. Or maybe, maybe I can't be. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and welcome back. We were gone for a bit because niggas got COVID and people traveling, you know, life. But we are back and we have two listener letter responses last week. So, you know, like, who do you see as like your your like supporter like your best supporter um and so one we actually have something from a recent anime from tomochan um and one person said that carol from tomochan is their favorite supporting character with how they like you know came into the crew afterwards and kind of like upset things but upset things for the better and then we have another one from um Bennett Garcis. I'm assuming I'm saying your name right. I let me know if I'm not because um but you said the supporting character has become your tenant to life is Kamina from Gurren Lagan. Believe in the me that believes in you and be the drill that pierces the heavens. Kamina's underrated, man. People so, uh they've been they've been sleeping on that man for years, but Yeah, cuz I mean Simon gets gets all of it basically he gets all yeah but, yeah but Kamina has that like the main character syndrome from like the giant robot series like he's got all that but then he's he's a bro there's not actually a lot of like legit bros in yeah. a lot of these action anime like it doesn't it doesn't like it, it, there's something about Kamina that he's like all about his own beliefs but he gives everything to Simon like Simon is his man he sticks up for him he does whatever, whatever it takes to the end like that's the dude yeah um for me it took a lot and i'm this is definitely not i feel like i'm going to see something on my hard drive and be like bitch it's actually that that's the one that you fucking wanted like that one right there but for me it is mako manshoko from kill a kill um primarily because not because of our overarching thing but because of how faithful they are are they were to that supporting character and when she got her fucking clothing equip and the that fact that sick. like they the teased boncho it, outfit. the yeah, boncho yeah, yeah. outfit at the beginning of the season, and then they go all the way back and they bring that shit back for the final battle. And I'm just like, yeah, no, I, I love her. Like I love, like I love her, her family, the goofiness, what they brought to the show. I'm just like, yeah, I I watched that scene so many times where like she transforms, she's trying to do all that shit while she's eating. They're cooking that shit for her, and then the fucking four elites come out and they start flexing on niggas. I'm just like, oh yeah. Yeah. So, well, maybe even it's the entire supporting cast of Kill a Kill. Maybe it is. I mean, that, look, they they go hard. I have um maybe some like off the maybe off the radar choices because of my interest. So I grew up as like a, a, a giant robot guy, a mm-hmm. mecha guy. So a lot of the series I think of are like much older. So I go back to like um Robotech and Robotech. You had uh Rick hunter who's like the main character but mm-hmm. like max sterling is always his number two and it was interesting because i went back and like i was like what do i remember about this character he was really cool he was a great pilot but he was a hippie he was like a straight out of like you know mid early 70s like like bohemian kind of guy and i realized like yeah. the reason he sticks out to me is that when i was watching that show i didn't know anybody like that like that, that oh. he was representing a character archetype that does not exist anymore like in anime um, more recently, like you go up a decade into Zeta Gundam. So Quattro Bajina, who was really Char, you know, he was a Char. Yeah, disguise. Quattro, yeah. But like his role as a What was that? Figure, he he like was on Earth with Camille and shit. Yeah, like they he, knew each other. Yeah, yeah, like he was, yeah, he was, well, he was working for the AUG as like, you know, just un, in just everyone knew. I mean, it was an open secret who it was, but like, you know, everybody knew. Oh. But, I, but, but when you watch the series back, at least having seen at least once you can kind of pay attention to the details he's playing this very complex father figure role for camille who starts out the series is just like like rage against the machine impetuous teenager doesn't want to live thinks all adults are, are fucking fools like literally assaults a police officer just off of off of clout in the very beginning like the episode one but like he yeah. learns from all the adults around him and also all their mistakes and i like characters like like char in that series because he is presented as a very complicated person who's a good template for others to learn from 
like what not to do sometimes how not to be an adult i so take my, my shit two. back i literally have a huge poster of fucking luffy right here and i completely forgot my fucking favorite supporting character nico fucking robin i yeah. love nico robin down down i still want that statue that was 200 dollars seven years ago and you should have got it it's 700 well they were sold out at anime nyc this was like the beginning of the anime nyc like year two and i walked in and i saw the statue on a sunday and i was like oh this shit is so i want it right now and i had the 200 and they were like oh we sold out of that yesterday and i was like what then why the fuck is it still on the display yeah right looked, can you buy it out of the yeah <laughs> right the and i What's looked it up on? recently and oh, that no, shit is seven hundred dollars now, and I'm like, ah. But to be honest, it, it I feel like it it might still be worth it because the detail was crazy. Like okay, it had yeah. it was like her and like I mean not lingerie, but she had like a pink like I've lingerie seen it. You, robe. You showed, yeah, you, oh yeah, yeah, uh, I showed that shit to you. Found but it. Yeah, yeah. and she had like hand wings, but like it was detailed as fuck. Like it was like, cool. It was yeah. it was really cool. But I love Nico Robin because. Uh, the character at first, I was like, who the, what the, who the fuck is this bitch? But when they went into her background and then we hit Water 7 in this lobby. And I just love how she is, she's not all knowing. She's like, she's knowing, but she's not like condescending and like an asshole to everyone on the ship. She's kind of just like, no, nah, these are my niggas. And I she's fuck very with them. stoic, a very she's stoic, character. very stoic. Mm. And she's basically just like, fuck around and find out. And I love that about her. I love how she's just like, you know, y'all go do all that shit. I'm going to figure some shit out over here. And when it comes time for her to fight now, I'm not caught up. I'm still at, what is it? She scraps. The, rev the Reverie chapter. Yeah, she scraps. Right before Wano. I'm there. But even before that, like, the there's that YouTube compilation of her fights. But when she fought Homeboy in fucking um, Skypea, fucked him up absolutely fucked him up and i mean she she i mean she got hurt too and things like that yeah. but i just loved her fighting style and the, when oh i just love the character concept as a whole but yeah nico robin is my fucking favorite i can't believe that the whole poster and shit is right here and my ass is trying to think of everything but okay but yeah that's what's up okay i mean it's kind of generic well no one piece isn't generic one piece is just all encompassing how can you not like it well there are people who don't like it but whatever um it's too long i'm lazy yeah 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 um anyways so um let's just go ahead and get into witch from mercury like let's just let's just okay so it's been a minute since i don't even remember what we we talked about last time last time we got well it was before the airy episode it was before yep. so i so out. i want to take my victory lap okay i did not get to do this uh -huh. for a couple of weeks that i called this shit <laughs> from the fucking preview yeah the I you did this, this you is did. exactly what I said. the only thing did. i didn't get right which you did we don't know the answer to this yet is where does suleta come from where does suleta that's come it from? right if if she's a clone fine if she's uh you, know, you did call this shit. Just, you did. You did. Yeah. You did. But like I, I said, exactly. What did I say way back? We go back. Roll the tape. I said <laughs> that you know, given the the that they got right to the violence and the the murders in the preview, I was like, okay, this show has a darker side. Yeah. You see, Ari kill a bunch of people and then get the fuck look out at the of there. Lights. Oh. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> oh yeah. Look, it's a happy birthday. Yay! All that shit. And I'm like. What would what would what would my dark brain do with this topic? Oh, why not kill her off and make her the Gundam? Yeah. And here we are. The, you know? I mean, the reveal was great. I loved it. I loved it. And that was that was the second episode, wasn't it? That was episode two. They sort of it, yeah they 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 wait no that was episode yes, three. Yes, we find episode out three. that that's true at the end of episode two, but then they go into the longer detail of because remember we even, actually it was the last episode was episode it was, four or five. Yeah, so three um, was where they revealed uh, uh, whatever. I really reveal. Yeah. They explain the the timeline of things that happened, including the fact that the events took place on Vanitas twenty one years prior to where we're at in the story now yeah which i believe six months have passed since the beginning of the, the um, show yeah so it's like 20 so it would have been 20 years yeah sort of kind of and Ari uh would have to be 20 something or she was probably 
two, three or four because she was talking. It wasn't yes. just like goo goo gaga. Yeah, she, it, was it was her fourth birthday. Yeah. Yeah, fourth birthday. Right. So she would have to be like 24, which wouldn't make any sense at all given if, for her to be Soleta because Soleta is clearly, you know, 15, yes. 16 years old. So they make it very clear, uh, especially by episode four. She Aries body couldn't handle space. Not sure what that means. It could be the radiation from Mercury and shit like right. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. But but either way, Sulet. Uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, Prosper frames putting Ari in the Gundam as a way to save her existence, which is an interesting, you know, it's, justification. I don't. I feel know like it's a half truth. Yeah, I don't know if I totally buy that either. But yeah, at least no. it gives that character's motivation some concrete like there has to be some dimensions here. Yeah. There has to be some explanation as far as Prospera because she is not the same character that we saw at the end of the prologue. Like she no. is a completely different person. And there have to be that there has to be like a, a like a series of events that catapulted her so far. That she right. would do this to Eddie. Like right. that. So, but then also so, I rewatched the um the prologue. Foolish idea. Foolish. Just absolutely idiotic. But um she actually it kind of made it make sense a little bit because when the husband was out there fighting, she didn't want to leave to save Eddie. She wanted to go fight. Yeah, it's true. She it's wanted true. to go back and fight. So I'm kind of just thinking, I was like, yeah, you love Eddie and shit like that. But also, I feel like her well-being most like is not at the forefront of her mind. Right. Now, I will go by what we have been told and what we have been shown. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, the directorial decision to kind of keep Prospera in the corner of the story for the first core means that right now as we're getting all this information about what her true motivation is it it feels a little jarring because she was sort of this uh shadowy figure that yeah. was clearly putting on an act but it was an act covering up what it wasn't clear now as you point out in the prologue um there's i think it's cathedra who are the ones who actually intervene yes. right yeah she says in episode four of the second course, I guess technically episode 16 or whatever. Yeah, 16. But, but yeah. Prospera says in her monologue that um, Rajan, who is Mirine's father, mm-hmm. um, caused, you know, everyone on the on Vanity to die because he was the one behind the witch hunting expedition that clearly Cathedral was the muscle for. Yes. So... If I if you connect if you believe what she has said in the last three or four episodes, it is very clear that her whole motivating ideology is revenge for her husband getting killed Mm -hmm. and then blaming the death of her daughter ultimately on On that as well. We don't know because I I, when you rewatch the prologue, do they make any mention of like Aries physical condition? In no. any way, be, yeah, because I don't The only thing that. that really was highlighted was when she was in um, Le Frith with the mm-hmm. doctor. And mm-hmm. the doctor was like noticing things, but nothing like specific was said about like, oh, your constitution, and nor did they say anything about, oh, you need to rest, you know, your, comp- your right. composition. I don't, I don't think it's anything like that. So here's my. So everything we've talked about is like what was actually said in the show. My guess. Because this show is pulling so much from like the canon of Gundam. If anybody remembers sort of the Char's counterattack UC Gundam era, one of the things that happens, and it even happens in um, Zeta at the end of uh, Zeta Gundam, is that when new types would essentially like overload, like where they would mm-hmm. reach that state of existence where they're connected to all things, i.e. like you achieve that trend. So their bodies, their becomes... bodies go away. Yeah. Right? They sort of become one with the energy of the universe. It's a very like Eastern philosophy kind of uh, you know idea. And that happens a lot. It's like the big one is like the axis shock in Char's counterattack that knocks the the asteroid out when Amuro mm-hmm. basically and Char and everyone else sort of like sacrifice themselves and they become energy, right? Um, it's possible that as they've described what the, what permit is, these permit particles, which are not until this episode, I think really discussed as a plot device. Yeah. Um, it's very possible that once you reach past a certain permit score, which sounds like you're, you becoming one with the, the The data data storm. storm. 
yeah. right? That you your physical body ceases to exist or becomes unstable, or you just get you be you know you become one with the universe yeah, of data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it seems like it's a it could be a similar effect of when it you know new types and all that other shit from the UC series. So it's possible that what she meant by couldn't survive space was by being forced into the Gundam and being so it put in such like a high stress situation that she was left with the choice of either like go into the lowest love permit level and like dissipating herself or like dying in yeah. some horrible way because we watched sophie yes right, sophie we yeah. watched sophie die as a result of permit overload yes so that is that is a possibility and that could be a device that they're using but then so if eddie well not if eddie if prospera is saying that eddie went to a permit score that was so high that she became part of the data storm. Is Sophie part of a data storm now? Well, did she or... just, did she just like, like, like bleed to death? Like, oh, she bleed to death. Yeah, she bled to death. Cause, it, yeah. Cause like, we know that the, the, the lore is that the Gundam system, which is just the permit, like connection between like a person's brain yeah. and the machine. The limb. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Kills, yeah. kills the pilots because it's overloading their brain. Yeah. Right. And the idea of a permit score is like the level of the, of union of data and, and mind so basically above certain levels you start to have physical problems it looked like yeah. sophie just had a brain hemorrhage and died which which would be consistent with what they were implying happens to anyone who who yeah. gets too deep in that stuff so again i don't know what we, they haven't really revealed like what is it that makes airy or made airy different yeah makes suleta different makes a combination of them different it's not totally flesh out what that could be but i could understand if it's like uh it, it again new in in uc gundam it's new type philosophy it's once you take a person from earth and bring them to space parts of their brain unlock that ultimately allow for these magic powers and like the whole overarching like philosophy of of gundam is that if everybody could become a new type everybody could share their feelings directly with each other and mm -hmm. therefore there would be no there would be no conflict because yeah. everybody would be connected and by being bound to earth you are basically saying everyone who who is trapped by the by the well of gravity are people who will never experience that awakening because you know they're so attached to living as an earth noid rather than as a space noid here in this series they've taken some of the same concepts but it looks like they've detached like the philosophy and made it more of like a technical um you know a, a, a like a technological justification for the same plot beat but it's not clear what makes somebody better at handling all of that data yeah we right bell the character bell when they're talking about like her situation and you know where she was part of that research team but her way forward rather than like you know follow what prosper was doing with her own daughter that was clearly its own thing she was like well maybe we can enhance humans to a yeah. point where like they can withstand more which is also unethical so the, clearly people are trying to play with this concept of like how do we achieve the union of machine or data and man um, but we have what we have not gotten is the usual third ideology, which is the one of like, well, if everyone could connect to the data storm, it would be the end of wars everywhere. Nobody really is espousing that. And I don't think no. that's really I don't think that's really a thing. That's um, really not so the we'll end game, especially goes. for Prospera. I feel like Prospera is using this all as a means to an end. But then sure. when she was talking about like everyone experiencing it, it, it almost makes me think like, is she preaching like mass extinction to like Maybe. For, for everyone to go into the data storm? Or because it feels like she a matrix that... like thing, right? Like turn everybody, you know, yeah. kind of control them with the uh, permit particles, mm -hmm. which might be what quite, maybe that's what the core of quiet zero is that you need something a uh, being like airy or suleta in order to power this but thing. also then... why is suleta and airy why are they the key like what is it about uh, suleta which i mean that's going to of course be revealed right. but that wait what what was it prosperous true colors is one thing but first of all her voice actress was fucking insane when oh, she, she started a great time she started slipping into the <laughs> I was like, no, who the fuck is this? But also, what the fuck was up? Because this week's episode, 
Elon got in there and Aries said, knock, knock, got knock, get the fucked. fuck got mind out. Fucked right out of it. Get out. But also, there were like multiple Aries in the background, and he was like, Who are you people? Not it's who very, are you? Very Evangelion, like and I know, think all Sophie, the Ayanamis. Did Sophie say something? I think Sophie said something that was plural also. Perhaps the idea here is that Quiet Zero, instead of maybe controlling people, is a is has to do with that interface between people and anything that uses like a like a gunned system. Yeah. Um. And so so I could see this tying into the story about the gunned arm company. Yeah. Because remember that you know Prosper was very much behind Miarine and Suleta forming this company, bringing in um the uh, some of the other companies that were clearly producing Gundam shit, and then pushing it as like oh it's medical devices, medical devices. If Quiet Zero allows basically that system to control everything and every anybody connected who to it has yeah. a gunned system, you know, on them. And I could easily see that as either like for warfare, like the end of all war, we'll just take over all the all the mobile suits and we can control them because that's what Aerie was doing with the the bits and other things and the yeah. other, like the 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 bit mobile suits. Like, okay, that was cool as fuck. Yeah, that was so cool. Oh my! I know they. I think someone said they did it in another series before. But I was Gundam like, I, X. Yeah, I was like, which I, is underrated. Nobody watched that shit because nope. it never got localized. But shit is good. Nope, didn't watch it. But god damn it, when I saw that shit, I was like, this is crazy. This bitch got Gundam bit, like not Gundam bit, like actual like mobile suit bits, like going at this. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Loved it so much. Also, niggas are dying. Yeah. I was like, wait, they just going They just killed one of the students. Like it was nothing. Yep. Okay. It came back up in that episode as well. Yeah. Um, but also, I it, think Martin is gonna die. I just he's been taking taking shots, bro. Yeah, I, I, I see feel like he's all over that guy. Yeah, I'm like, I feel like you have a lot of death flags, homie. Like you really weren't that important in the first season, and then all of a sudden now you're everywhere. You're out of here. I'm so. I'm sorry. just saying, like he he he's a puppy dog character, right? Like, yes. He's such a. Just a sympathetic. He's you know, gonna be something for like Nika to basically like witness his death, right, and then right. she's like, "Oh no, blah blah blah, whatever." Anyways, um, um, I did I was, shout out to to Gundam Exo because that that was such an interesting concept. It was post apocalyptic Gundam. It was like imagine all the the UC stuff like happened more or less the same, but instead of like stopping the uh, like the axis hitting the planet it um, did. the the bad guys just launched like every colony at the planet <gasps> so it basically wiped out most of the life on earth and so it the cool thing about it was it it had a a neat like design aesthetic that kind of felt a little uc but also a little bit like um uh uh what is it? G Gundam, mm -hmm. you know, and the idea of like going around on a land ship instead of an airship was cool. And then that the, you're kind of un unearthing old Gundam technology. The main character, mm. I think Garrod Ron, um, he reminds me of other Gundam main characters they've done since him. And in particular, I could look at I Gundam IBO, um, uh, Witch from Mercury. Yeah, some of the later stuff they did actually in the UC series and Unicorn, and see that they have, they they took ideas from Gundam X and then brought them for even in uh like uh the mobile dolls from from Gundam Wing. Um, oh yeah yeah yeah. Like that was something they already the I, the I, there were actual like new types in in Gundam X, but the idea about a new type is that new types have the ability to like control the bits. These like mm -hmm. Gundam, these ex Gundam bits, and it was a whole thing. Like it's really cool. Um, but I see a lot of the DNA of that and other past shows in the ideas in Witch from Mercury. But in Witch from Mercury, they're much more philosophically developed, so that they play into the story from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, which is very very good. Uh, what else? Um, I like the symbolism that occurred this past week with the tomatoes. I thought that yes. was great. Yes. I thought that was very, very good, especially for what was happening right then and there. And then for Miarine, who, for someone who has access to so much power and thinks she has power, she really, she really just be. Prosper she's still sunned young. her. Oh. Prosper sunned her. Oh, oh come on. man. I actually thought she was going to like break her hand or some shit for a moment. <laughs> like, but you know, it'd be what it'd be. But yeah, she was like, yeah, you're my pawn now. Welcome, which yep. 
you already had it expected in the first place where it was going to be some kind of like pseudo relationship and then prosper was going to get the the upper hand um yeah and also just suleta is just conditioned she's just conditioned to be that way but also i guess like one thing that i'm thinking is that if you're right about the clone stuff then maybe all those other Aries that are inside are failed clones. And I, Suleta I, is I the one that know. actually fucking lived. So, I don't know. It doesn't make sense knows. that because there's no way that Suleta could be Eric's um, daughter. Yeah. Like her, like it's not possible. So. Yeah, no, no, no way, <laughs> no way. It's not, it's not possible. There's just so, no technology I don't. I don't believe. Unless, well, they haven't. Even I mean, they can make up like whatever that. they want. I'm they not saying can. that they couldn't yeah. do that, but it's the, like at this point, based on what we know, her background is sus at the moment. Very, very sus. And they've already done like human experiments and other shit in this series. Oh my god! I thought that are the Elon. Associate. Yeah, yeah. I thought that Elon was the real one this whole time, but apparently they just were like, it's it's another clone. His personality is just much like the original Elon. And yeah. I was like, oh, I completely missed that shit. Cause I'm just thinking, I was like, wait, can the original Elon get this deep in the permit? And I'm like, is that a clone? I completely missed that when they introduced the new one. Right. Like last I'm season. having I'm also having like one minor problem, but it's not like a problem. Mm. Kinda sorta rocking with Shadiq harder than anyone else on the cast right now. After he revealed uh, the okay I, honestly i was confused as fuck when he was talking to his dad but then when it kind of got like broken down so basically what he wants is to afford he wants to give earth bargaining power on yes. the world on the universal stage correct so like he wants them to just not be something that's always taken advantage of he wants it to actually be something that can in the event that they don't want something they can right he wants themselves. to balance the scales yeah but also profit by being in the middle okay right? so he also wants to profit okay so yes. it's not just like i want it's the not best it's not Earth. totally altruistic but to okay. be perfectly honest i agree with him in fact i agree with them at a level that like it it almost worries me because i don't want to root against this character let me put it this way i like that's practical. good that's like, good he's a, he's a villain in the sense that he's killing lots of people so like in the you know the that, that's how yeah. we always general morals villainy. yeah yeah you know he's a great he has great morals but like at the same time he's the most practical person right he's very intelligent Get shit he's done. super charismatic he's very attractive he has normal human reactions to shit he's not like a mustache twirler he's like okay i've got some goals that i want to achieve some of that shit is good it's what he wants to get done is good and in the in the scene with Nina and the other purple hair girl, where she's like uh, talking about Shadiq's motivations, and yeah, then, and, and the girl tells her like, "You can't, you're you're you idealistic, yeah, you've got your idealist idealistic vision about like, oh, we're gonna make Earth and space work together. Or do you have and the power fucking, to do anything? Right, but that's fucking cute, right? You you don't have the practical reality to back that up. You don't have the power. You don't understand how the world works." And there's a point where, like, in the Mia Rene's conversation with Prospera, where she yells the thing that is always the refrain in every Gundam series. Like, if y'all adults have all these motherfucking problems, why don't y'all get up and fight and kill each other about it? Why you got to bring us into this me this mess? Okay? And that's always the Gundam point of view, is that, like, war is bad. Because it's a, it's a weird series, if you really think about it, at, like, a thousand feet. Like, Gundam is a series about giant Child robots. Soldiers. That she, yeah, right. That shoot each other and are piloted by child soldiers in wars. Always. Okay. That, that's the whole appeal of the series. But they always have this like moralistic vision that they were, but also war is bad. It's <laughs> really bad. And then meanwhile, but here's the new jetpack, nigga. Get out yeah, exactly. there. Bandai Namco is like counting all their money as they sell another plastic figurine of a war machine. So they always have that like hip, little hypocrisy built into like what the story is about so this one again like me is like the adults are stupid they're the one causing all these wars if we just got rid of war the kids would grow up fine it's like girl no no girl no nothing nothing doesn't matter who's who's doing the fighting eventually y'all don't fight agree on some shit 
They go, and, and, and they go fight. They go so fight. So Shadiq's <laughs> perspective is, if niggas go fight, I'm going to make sure that the people I identify with the most have an opportunity to you have a You know what? That's shake. such an only child fucking standpoint. It's such it an is. only child thing. Because if she had yes. siblings, if you two niggas are growing up side by side and your children and you're innocent, what right. always happens? You niggas go um, fight. Stop always. Fight. Yeah, it's, like, it's like siblings, the people who are closest in life are always fighting. They're always fighting. So you're everything. always going to fight. It's such an only child fucking yeah. mindset where it's just like, but me and the other didn't know. So no. what I'm saying when I said it's a problem is because I know Gundam. I love Gundam. I'm not here to like shade that perspective because that's that's what it's all no, about. No, but you always but, you say that like a good villain is likable. Yes, yes, and that's the problem is that he may get to be way more likable, way more reasonable, and way more interesting than any other individual member yeah. of the main cast. Like I get also that this series has done a good job of attracting like young women to like mm. take a look at at Gundam. I think that's fantastic. Um, and building a sort of like Yuri esque story underneath all. Oh of it yeah, yeah, is yeah. cute. But like, I would have preferred that say Suleta gets a lot more like deep development. That's why I thought the time skip would be a little bit longer so that we could meet that character oh. when she's a little more grown up. But like, we're noticing now we're halfway through the second core, and the principal like conflict is basically going to be Suleta finally saying no to her mom. Which, yeah. is, which is good. It's it's absolutely important. But also, the show moves at a pretty decent pace, where that might oh, come sooner rather than like. Near I mean, the it, end. It, okay, yeah, you're you're correct there. I would assume it would have to be a little sooner than the end. Yeah. But like, but my point is, it, while that's all happening, Shadik is this very well developed, formed main character who's also, you know, not presented like a like a dumb child, right? So for my enjoyment personally, I I worry that I'll wind up wanting more of him. And less of That's a lot okay. of the main cast. That's it all makes sense in the universe, though, because she literally grew up by herself, like away oh, from like other children, other kids. So like she has way higher social hurdles and just everything to surmount yep. in addition to all the shit that she's dealing with. So I mean, like going, it's going back to like going back to like Zeta Gundam, um, Camille is a very unlikable character yeah. for the first like 10 to 20 episodes of that series because He's surrounded by adults who are dealing with a lot of real shit. And then he's like acting out and just being like a an annoying teenager. That if you are not an annoying teenager, that shit is fucking annoying. But then it goes on long enough where you watch that development into more of like a, I won't say an adult, but like a real more realistic view on like yes. how difficult it is to live as a person in that world. So I, I know that um in in this series it kind of buries the lead. It's like, oh, Gundam High School. Oh, it, we're going to go have duels. We're going to do this. And then it's like, well, there's there's the real story that's happening. I think we didn't really talk about this either. So Gwell's story on Earth was fucking awesome. Oh, my God. They lit awesome. No Suleta the entire episode. Right. No Suleta. No me. Man, that was so... It was good. It yeah. was so good from... The um, what's this Ocelo? The, Ocelo? Yeah, what's the fuck? mentor character the, who was really like a cathedral pilot. Yeah, like, but like there was so much. I was like, I this I want to come out after that episode. Like this. Wait, is so is Cathedra is Cathedra the is the pilot woman that pilots Mirina's ship? Is she Cathedra or is she that third Maybe. party that's researching? She everyone? sounds like she's like a third party. Okay, so because they somehow to, that's what I'm waiting for. Them. I'm waiting for them to come into it more so because they're kind of like the. The like the random factor that really hasn't made any moves, but clearly has power. Yeah. But they haven't really done anything. So yeah, that Gwell episode from within the first three minutes, tears and like <laughs> I was like, wait, this, this is this is a lot more than what we've already gotten. And then from the from them just like highlighting what life is like on Earth, the whole. I love how they introduced all those characters, gave them such defined personalities, made them interact with each other, and then killed them one by one. All of them. Except for one. Except for one. My God. I think, no, two. The little boy lived. Yeah, the little girl died. The little girl died. The little boy lived. But I'm just like, wow. Y'all really are just like, y'all know what y'all are doing. Like, it was such a good, like, 
focus point outside of like everything else that's going on. And then Gwell comes back this episode, which I mean, everyone doesn't know that he's back, but it gives credence to like his character growth that we will most likely see throughout the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. Also, we don't even know when all that stuff happened technically. Well, no, it, it did happen within the most recent te- timeline mm-hmm. because they sent those mech, them, they're searching for that mercenary group on Earth. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I really loved that um, we spent time away from the main cast on something that felt important. It felt like Gwell's character kind of got reduced down to this um, just sad sack like dummy by the fourth or fifth episode he was like living in the woods he yeah. wasn't like talking to anybody nobody was like nobody had his back he just sort of was out of the story outside of a couple interactions with Suleta where it's like oh he gets a, you know he, is he's he gonna really be her knight oh. right whatever I was like oh. and when I thought that it was possible that the whole story would stay in the school like that was a you know it was very it would have been a very stereotypical way to go forward. It would have been believable, yeah. But the the what the shit that they put him through, um, in a way kind of is like the dark parallel for everything Miorine is has had to deal with. Where like mm. he was a pawn, right, from the very yeah. beginning. Maybe moved around by his dad. Um, not like he was definitely more popular in the school. But you could tell, like, the inside of his company, like, it was not good. Like, him and his brother were, like, the getting their asses whipped, like, for, just for, for not being good enough, like, to, to achieve what the father wanted. Then they strip him of everything, his reputation, his, like, esteem inside the company. His brother takes over. He basically, like, leaves in disgrace quietly. He's, literally, he's like, working the galleys on some random-ass ship. Then it's like everything does like a, a complete 180. It's get it's boarded by pirates. People get killed. He has to escape. He winds up killing his own father by accident because the radio doesn't work. He's like now like completely despondent, like just catatonic, a prisoner of war. Gets brought down to Earth. Gets slapped around by a bunch of fucking kids. Clearly trying to commit suicide by like not eating. Like yeah. getting force fed by mercenaries. <laughs> Then watches a child, like, he almost dies again. Yes. Watches a child almost die. Then decides, like, to be a fucking man. Grabs her, tries to save her, gets in a down mobile suit. Gets into, like, a life or death fight. With a mangled and all- body. Mangled <laughs> bodies. Like, yeah. he's now, like, he understands, like, the what's really going on on the surface. He's yes. He's come around as more well Which I think character. that was great for us. We got to see what shit is like on Earth for, like, the yeah. first time outside of Sophie and Homegirl's, like, small glimpses. Yeah. Right. And now he's back taking charge. His dad is dead. Like, he's got to step up and be the man for real. Like that, his his character arc as well as the development. Go join having, Earth House. Yeah, he could. He absolutely could join Earth House. But if you notice, they're setting up Mirine, Gel, and Shadik as separate power centers mm-hmm. in this new reorganization of what the because the duels know. have to become important again. Even though Mirine isn't the prize, the prize is going to be the presidency now. Yeah. Now, I my guess is that the, we won't see another duel until the end of the series. That's my guess. And mm. I think that whatever we get at the end is not going to be a... Uh, it'll be a duel in spirit, not in... Yeah. Uh, right? But anyway, to that point, they've now set up the, like, three very, very different young, new generation leaders, all of whom represent very disparate ideas, because... Um, Mirine and Shadik are both like fuck family. Family is yeah. fucking whack. All like my parents were the worst. Like in both cases, I think. Well, one is okay. So Shadik just kidnapped his dad, right? Or did he kill him? Uh, kidnapped him. Yeah, he just kidnapped him. Mirine's father almost died, but he's more or less like Life physically support. incapacitated. Yeah, Gail's dad is dead, and so the perspective that all three of them have about family is very different. Their perspective about business is very different. Their interests are all very different. And I also do not foresee uh, how this election is going to go, this little mini election story, because it yeah. could be the case that all three of them wind up together, or it could be the case that not, they're all made sort of the leaders of different sub factions going yeah. forward. Because everyone has to win, right? Gail wants to do it for everything he's experienced with his father. Um, 
Prospera is manipulating the arena to do it for basically blackmail and a bunch of other shit. And then Shadik has had this plan to take over the shit from the beginning. And we still got to get rid of some of these old guard people who are still around. So I mm. wonder if like one of them wins. Yeah, like Pale. Through, I don't know. Yeah, pay them witches, man. They are ra- they're waiting. They've been I waiting. Love them, for I love shit. their characters because they have such weird faces. Yes. Like they're just like staring at you like this at all times. I'm like, all right, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I like it. So I don't know where we're going, but I'm loving what we're doing right now. Yeah. It has all been phenomenal. Like, and we got the grunt suit fight really in episode strong. three. Cause that I love me a grunt suit. You know, the grunt earth. Suit suit. Oh yeah, the earth. Yeah. Oh man. I that love that whole suits. battle was just like one after another. I remember the homeboy in the beginning being like, I don't need any armor because I'm bitch, fast. Bitch. You don't need what, nigga? The guy who was like, oh, yeah, uh, don't worry about me. Like, you know, I, you know, I, I got it together. I'm not in Petrus. And then the first time dude show up, he's like, ah! <laughs> Cut, first, shoots the first shot. And as soon as homeboy was hugging, his daughter and wife. I was like, you yeah, I saw that. I was like, no, out of here. Back. Either you, you are coming back or they are dead. Here. And then, of course, they showed the photo of the wife and daughter burning up as his shit cooked his ass alive. That's now, that's the Gundam, Gundam I know. That's, yeah, that's the Gundam, Gundam I know. Right there. That Where's Tamino Gundam. at? You got something to do with this? <laughs> he Where probably consulted in the back end or some shit like that. I don't know. And well, was I mean, like, we don't got, let I... them know. Don't let them know I talk to you. Don't let them know I right. talk to I you. Right. I mean, we all know how I, uh, Iron Blooded Orphans ended. So it's like, I you mean, know. Yeah, and that was. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I, I did not finish Iron Blooded Orphans, but I saw how that nigga was looking near the end, and I was just like, yeah, that's not going to end well for him. I can it, already it, it tell. Doesn't. I can't. It doesn't. I can't already, it's not, it's gonna <laughs> but I will say, me. I will say this. I think Mikazuki is the first Gundam main character that we can confirm had sex with somebody because oh, he has a son. <gasps> oh, ooh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did he have sex while he was paralyzed? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> okay, I got. I got. He did, out. but he did the deed. So I'm like, okay, good for you, man. Wow. Okay, let me go finish Iron Blue. I'm like halfway through this the second part. Like, I will with whatever the Earth battle shit. Oh yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah. I gotta get past that, and then we'll get into the bro. Movie there's movie so, oh my god. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of shit <laughs> oh my there's god. There's a lot of shit that's gonna go down. I know. I know. Uh, yeah. Child brides and all that shit. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, it's a lot. It's, yeah. it's a lot. <laughs> um, um, okay. okay, we have spent. I mean, we were behind y'all. Um, let's go ahead and get to the next big one then. Um, what the fuck is going on in Hell's Paradise? I, I am so. Uh, first of all, I'm anxious the entire time. I'm anxious, and I said it this week. I was like. It's giving, it's not like exactly like Danganronpa, but my God, it gives me the same like heights of anxiety that Danganronpa gives you, but just quicker because it's not a, oh, we're doing a trial. We got to figure it out. It's like, no, niggas are going to die. Like you don't, you have, you like this character? Dead, nigga, dead. They're gonna die soon. You don't know when. Or the character you don't like, it's like, okay, that nigga got watched, blah, 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 blah. At any moment, anyone can get got outside of the main two, as of right now. Because I'm just like, at the rate that we're going, I don't know. The way they built up the red-haired guy to be like the overpowered mentor that's probably gonna <laughs> betray her, shit like that, got got. Nah, bro. God, God. <laughs> nah, I was like, wait nah, a second. Nah. The sword broke. <laughs> sword. I was like, oh, he's gonna. Oh, ooh. He was real confident too. Dead, dead. I was like, okay, that's one thing. Purple hair. What is his Sagiti? Um, what was his name? The purple haired one who was like, whose um dude attacked him first, and then he got killed by Gabimaru, and he was like, I'm leaving. Deuces. She. He was like, homegirl, you don't know half the shit that's going on. Blah 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 blah. This week's episode, nigga, you ain't going nowhere. You're dead too. You're done. <laughs> You're done. You're actually a fucking flower. And then you have the I like the dynamic that they just introduced with the the native, like the indigenous girl who's like smart and the just the muscle head fucking samurai who's just like, just tell me what the fuck to do and I'll do it. But like, 
we gotta we gotta live like we gotta live we gotta do something overall the taoist buddhism stuff i'm like i i don't get it i just don't know where it's coming from but also they haven't really explained anything about the power system and like mm -hmm. what forces actually exist in that world outside of just like human ingenuity so right we're not we're not there yet and one of the yeah. things that i've heard people say about who have not who don't know anything about the series it feels like every episode they think they're in a completely different anime like mm. and 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 that's understandable because we we ain't even got there yet and there's <laughs> like, so much i do know that some i think joe said it i think did joe say that he read up to a certain point and then stopped he said mm -hmm. that uh, yeah he did he did say that when we were talking about it earlier he said that he read when they got to a certain point and he was like oh this is gonna be fucking amazing and then he's like i'm gonna watch the rest of it so i'm i already know we haven't reached that point because everything so far has just still been like build up slight explanations i do really enjoy when they're like having the sit down stuff and god like this past episode where gabi mara was explaining the plants on the island are probably just actually all dead corpses that have transformed mm -hmm. <laughs> what the fuck man it's like what what but we're then not, it makes sense we're not even at the weirdest it makes sense. we're not and, even close to the weirdest oh, parts <laughs> But then it, it like, but everything made it like the when they get to it and when they find the explanation for it or when they like expound upon it, it makes sense because one of the first things that he noticed when they got on the island is that these these flowers should not be growing in the same environment together. Like specific Correct. flowers are they should not be able to survive in an environment like this. He said it's too abundant. It's too lush. It's too. It's just too much of everything. The monsters were like she cut she cut the monster open. She was like, there are no reproductive organs. And then they were like throwing around theories about that. And I'm like, so mm -hmm. are they actually humans? Are they not humans? What are they? Are they transformed humans or like something else? Or are they deformed gods? Like I I'm saying all this stuff because like these are the things that just come to my mind like immediately as I think of it. But it's so fucking it's all it's it's very similar to Heavenly Delusion, where like Heavenly Delusion is like just constantly drip feeding you information and you're like, Oh, okay, I think this, I think that, and nope, it's actually this because they just answered that and now I have mm -hmm. five more fucking questions. Exactly. So, yeah. I overall I'm loving it, but yeah, what the fuck is actually going on? Um and also, it gave very almost like Attack on Titan level like kind of vibes with them like showing up the the whatever the being showing up. Um, and I'm very much so looking forward to the betrayals because them brothers when Homeboy ran off from him, I was like, <laughs> no nigga, he actually left you, and then you provided the opportunity for him to come back. He left your ass. He left you. I like, you can see it in his eyes. So I'm just wet. It's coming back up. And the little brother's living in delusion. You're in a fucking world of delusion. And ah. <laughs> in the Genjutsu, just. Uh, yeah, he's literally, yeah. he's literally like talking himself through getting fucked over by his brother because mm -hmm. he is not, he's not strong enough. Like his brother clearly has been the one that has always been. We, we got to do what we got to do to fucking survive. But he also has talents that the little brother does not have. And it's most likely going to get to the point. The fact that that nigga even said, we're going to take the elixir for ourselves. No, he's going to take the elixir for himself. You're going to help him get there. At least that's where I think this is going. All these fucking alliances that we can have now, especially with like the Kunochi. I'm just like, girl, you about to betray everybody like immediately. <laughs> I also thought it was... It was gruesome, but it was also entertaining and funny as fuck how she made the alliance with that guy to experiment, like strictly right. to experiment with shit. To figure out what the fuck is going to on. To figure out what's going on. And then when he didn't serve his purpose anymore, she was like, okay, well, die. <laughs> like, you, you out of here. <laughs> like, it's out of here. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It has not quite reached the point where I'm head over heels Mm -hmm. screaming from the rooftops fucking watch this show right now because yeah the sakuga is there actually you know what i do have one criticism for the show and i feel like in the music department it's really not hitting mm. like some of the other shows this year i'm not really getting any uh, or i'm not really remembering any prominent themes in the show um and i don't know if it's because of you know the sound direction where like the volumes 
are a little bit lower than the action scenes where like the motifs really aren't being highlighted as much. Mm -hmm. Um, or if it's just because the soundtrack is literally just, just background, like it is not meant to be much more than what it is. Now I could be completely fucking wrong. Um, and I, I could maybe even like this next week I might go in and be like, okay, this motif plays for this character, this motif plays for this character. But even if those things are there, I would say like after these past, what, four, five, five episodes, there's been nothing that has stuck out to me. Like, let's say, like, the My Hero Academia. And I think we got, I think we got the first real, in that series, I think we got the first real debut of, like, that theme working well during the second half of the exam. Yes. Yeah. And that was, like, episode three or four, I think, when that happened. Yeah. So. My guess, and I can't speak to the soundtrack. Is um we I, is that so? There's a the island arc is more or less wrapping up. Island doesn't mean they're getting off the island; it just means that's the name of the arc. The yeah, yeah, arc. yeah, 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 yeah. Is more or less wrapping up now, and then there's another arc coming where we start to get the primary antagonists who we have not Ooh. met at all yet. Oh. And I would guess that those encounters will probably be where we see if they have a musical score that's kind of up to the task okay so getting to the hype so the things that probably have been presented now are not the actual meat that we're going to be getting absolutely as far as like <laughs> character wise outside of the main two people and the things that they've gone up against but i would just say pay attention to the opening and if there are people and things yeah there are, are a the lot opening, of people in the opening that have not shown up that that that's all I'm gonna say about it. Yeah, so we'll see when we get to those encounters. Because there's like, or not... what is it? There's like those people sitting in that gazebo or some shit like that, mm-hmm. and things like that. Yeah, I, I I'm seeing a lot of people in the open. There's someone with that blonde hair, like longer mm-hmm. blonde hair, and then who the fuck is that hugging the little the one? I was like, there are a lot of them these people that I do not know who they are. One of my favorite aspects about this series are the antagonists. And mm. what they what they what they represent and the way they play with a lot of like existing not just tropes in anime, but like tropes in like media and presentation. So the oh. that blonde haired character that's in the opening yeah. um is one of the coolest character concepts. Um that kind of only really works once you once this story kind of plays out what it's what it's working with. Um, cause at first it's kind of like, wait, what the fuck? And then you're like, oh, oh, wow. Uh. <laughs> so I hope, yeah, I hope yeah, the, yeah, the soundtrack, yeah. uh, lives up to what I expect to be a pretty good, um, ending to this core. Cause obviously yeah. we're only getting based the, off these... of what you and so many other people have been saying about it. Cause I know a lot of people ran and like read the manga right before it dropped and mm. like everyone that I saw going through it. Thank you for not spoiling but yep. they all were just like, this is so fucking good. And I'm not really getting that right now. It is good, but mm-hmm. I think it's good because of the production mm-hmm. so far. But as far as like the overall story and things like that, I think things are still very just like vague and they're like every which way. And yep. so I'm, I'm waiting for the ball to drop where it's like, this is actually what's going on. And this is where we're actually fucking heading. Because, yeah. you, like, as you said, I think in the episode, the beginning of episode three, shit immediately changed after they got on the island. It was not, well, hidey ho ho, we're going to go find the fucking elixir. It was, actually, we're going to kill each other again. And then we're also going to start highlighting the, uh, um, the, the Asimon. Asimon. The prisoners. Yeah, yeah, the Asimon. And, like, highlight how they have their own goals in addition to mm-hmm. the prisoners. So I'm like, oh, okay, so that... And then they even mentioned that the ninjas are coming. So it's just... And I'm like, oh, well, then shit, why should you even go on the island, nigga? You should have just stayed in the fucking, like, in Japan. Because, fuck. So that's happening. Also, that they keep going to that scene with the village chief or all that shit, like, chopped up in him. I'm like, oh, this, yeah, that nigga... So also something that they did say that... I don't know, maybe it was a mistranslation with my thing... But they were like guesstimating that the beasts were immortal because of the elixir. So they were thinking like maybe the beasts had gotten the elixir themselves. But if they were immortal, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't die because the village chief, he doesn't die when he gets fatally wounded. So 
Is that a mystery? There's a lot. There's a lot. No, not necessarily. Okay. So also um, what I'm thinking, which I could be wrong. This is just my random thought is that like the island itself or like the sustenance on the island itself is the elixir. So after being on the island for so long and consuming that shit, you become that shit or whatever, blah, 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 blah. That would make sense if there were like beasts and other things that were of the same way. But that about that's about as far as I got because I'm pretty sure I'm going to watch this Saturday's episode and just completely be like, well, that was dumb because no, because this and that mm-hmm. and this, this and that. So I don't know. They're setting up or I believe they're setting up the main cast. <laughs> but I, yes. so many more niggas are going to die most likely before we get to like the core core story but i am really enjoying a protagonist that has a first of all a i wouldn't say a mature protagonist but a protagonist that is doing something beyond i want to be the strongest in the world i want to be known far and wide i want to go live a good life with my fucking wife and get the fuck away from all of you yes yeah i like that but also i Thought that the clashes that he had had with Sagiri, is that her name? Mm -hmm. Sagiri? That they were extremely reasonable because he recognized that no matter, even if he is strong as fuck, for him to do what he needs to do, she is dead weight. She's fucking dead weight. At current. I mean. mean. Current. (laughs) Like. I mean, is it is that a, is that wrong though? <laughs> it's not wrong. So yeah. in fact, it was like, okay, yeah, you are. He's actually doing you a mercy, girl, by just taking you out right now, because otherwise, these monsters are gonna fucking make you just suffer. Um, yeah, this there's just so much going. On. So as a person who has read it and has consumed it until the end, what are your thoughts so far, based off of like where we are with episode five? So I, the first, I think the first two episodes were very good and very strong in what I was hoping for from the series in terms of just like taking the time to adapt the right parts of the manga so that we Mm. understand who all the characters are, kind of what their motivation is and so on. And giving a little bit of exciting um, action to tease you as to like, what is the 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 realm of possibility that you could get out of the show if you were a new viewer. I think they did a great job there. I think that um, the challenge comes in episode three through five because there's so much information that has to be communicated, mm. a lot of which gets somewhat, I won't say invalidated, but at the very least recontextualized over, the, uh, over like the first six episodes where a lot of things that maybe the audience expected to be true um or or to be like the uh uh the meat of what's going on in the story is actually kind of get they get thrown out the window right and so as a result of that problem i feel like they did about as well as uh, one could hope when i was reading it my experience was that the art was really really good and i was very intrigued by the the mysteries and so Obviously, when things pick up in later chapters, it's like, ah, good. You spent the right amount of time building. But at least you had something, like, really pretty to look at while you're dealing with the exposition. keep you there, yeah. Right. Because as of right now, the main... If I'm, a, if I'm just, like, judging it purely on what's on the screen, I've seen a little bit of action that says, like, cool stuff could go down. But I'm not... I wouldn't expect anyone to just be totally sold out the gate. And I, yeah. I thought about this when I was watching the latest episode because I know that it kind of is wrapping up the introduction to what is going on. And then as we go to the next arc, which really gets to like why people love the series as much mm, as okay. they do, that it will that it'll pay off. I was reminded of a conversation we have had on this podcast, a conversation that many other people have had prior to this, which is Demon Slayer. Mm. Demon Slayer had really good music. It was a pretty good production. I think it had a fun cast, but it really didn't hit until episode 20. That's what a lot of folks now. Oh, yeah, episode 19 with the. Yeah, 1920. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, like that was the point where Demon Slayer became not just a, a good show that a fair number of people who were, you know, in America anyway, were watching. Yeah and excited for into oh shit this the one yes and yeah because niggas I think, really weren't checking for it before then and then that clip circulated like 
air. Right. Yeah. I don't think um, Jujutsu Kaisen had a breakout until around episode 13, Mm -hmm. which was the the games. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, you know, Boogie Woogie and all this other stuff that, like, if you told people ahead of time, just wait till some nigga claps, and then it's like, oh, this is going to be, you'll be in. They look at you like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen had a good theme, good opening, and it was fun, and had a cast of characters that was doing cool stuff. But if you're being honest about when the general public or the anime watching public got into the series, it was when the hype meter went from like a 7 to an 11. Yeah. Right? And Because even when Gojo first showed off his powers, people weren't that like enamored no they were like oh he's he's gorgeous and so you got that reaction that character got over but insofar as like the the hype level on the series it really didn't pick up until it had a viral moment and the viral moment that stuck was this nigga clapping and looking like he's about to ejaculate while they beat the shit out of a demon right and then it got a second one when it was uh uh the the beat down of the school where they where it was meme to all hell like yeah. Mahito getting his ass like two he got he got jumped by fight a gang back, of two people fight back fight, fight back, back. <laughs> fight back you know so like again it took until that moment which wasn't until the second the second core right to really uh have have the hype level reach the point where people who are like manga readers knew that it could with a good adaptation hell's paradise is the same way but i would say that a lot of the really cool stuff is in the interaction between our sort of kind of protagonists and the antagonists who have not even yet been named or seen in the series. So I'm happy mm. with where stuff is at right now. I think it's doing good. Um, I have maybe like one or two very minor questions about you know production, but it nothing looks cheap. It all looks good. Yeah, it and does. we're going where we need to go, so I'm I'm ready for it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I feel I feel like once that reveal drops, so much more can be discussed. But I mean, we spent yeah, a lot plenty. of time on we spent a lot of time on Witch for Mercury. So what? Oh, okay. Isekai cheat skill. Um, I interesting show. Very interesting, interesting show. I would say I could do without like half of every episode. I would agree with you, and I'm not even sure wh- if we would even agree which half. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's- I'm over the the. I'm over the slice of life, and I love slice of life. I'm uh-huh. over it, nigga. You're insecure. We get it. Yes. Thanks. I'm. But over he's hot. It. But he's hot. Oh, <laughs> but he's oh, hot. look at oh, look at him. Oh, oh my god. Oh, he's hot. Yeah, I mean, he's hot. you're hot. We get it. Now. Um. After did you watch this week's episode yet? The yes, I'm caught today. up on it. Yeah. So the only the actually the interesting thing to me is I think Kaori is cursed. <laughs> the the <laughs> man girl. I think she's yeah, cursed. What's uh? Can you be what? What's like the female version of getting cut? Yes. Like, <laughs> constantly like, and in every direction. No, not even that. I'm talking about like she's cursed. Like. First episode, about to get fucking sexually assaulted. True, the yep, previous almost episode, raped. Almost got hit by metal bats and then it's yep. fucking um, oh, kidnapped jumped by the Jumped by a gang that, that came out of a time machine from like the late 80s. And then this episode almost got stabbed. It's like, yes. girl, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're the problem. Man. Like, you're the problem. So today's episode made me just think, okay, maybe there's a link between her and something else because... Hell no. Bitch, you always in trouble. Like, you're no, worse than no, Princess no, Peach. No, 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 like, no, what are we doing? <laughs> you know the but, funniest part? The funniest part about her character is that in any other series, she would be like the... The, the very hot... The, yeah, the very hot class president who constantly is flirting with the main character to the chagrin of like the girl next door best friend oh but that that girl next door best friend doesn't exist so she's now the girl next door best friend who is constantly jealous of all the other women who are but hotter than her is, and she's already like a nine and a half <laughs> you know what the I mean? thing is is that all the other girls are shooting their shot yeah true they're shooting the shots and they're not being okay the princess is aggressive as fuck i was like all right girl whatever but, but she doesn't but know the, about her yet but the <laughs> classmate 
literally was like, I want to hang out with this nigga. And then listened and waited for her opportunity to be like, oh, uh, I'm free. I'll go to with you to the pet shop. You know, I know where no. it's at. And I'm like, shooting your shot immediately. Thank you. She's over here catching feelings, all hoopty hollering. You ain't even told a nigga you like him. You ain't said nothing. You haven't nothing. said anything. Your homegirls are like, yo, is he single? And she's like, oh, well, he's got to have a girlfriend, right? Because that's why I'm not saying anything. And the other girls are like, well, that's not a no. So let's go. Let's. It's on. So that, um, and also I'm really enjoying the the other world like fighting i actually kind of enjoy that they're not just like immediately taking him out and did the time skip into him going to meet the king Mm -hmm. i like how they're keeping him in the forest and that there's also like confusion and he's still learning about the world because the way that i saw it i was like oh this nigga's like over p overpower he gonna get through that fucking thing he's not leveling up anymore the monsters are much higher level than him but for some reason he's able to defeat them still he's struggling and now he also has night and it's becoming obvious that he needs to collaborate the the deeper he goes into the forest because there are niggas in there. Oh, fuck him up. But also, I'm thinking the sage is the damn grandfather. But then yeah, the, sa- the yeah. sage's book is in a fucking dungeon, like hidden dungeon somewhere in the hands of a skeleton. So I'm like, okay. That, that was the thing this week. I was, the cliffhanger was a little too abrupt. It, like, it, it, <laughs> it came really out nowhere. Yeah, it came out of nowhere. I was like, I, I thought the episode was like halfway through on this shit. But overall, I like it for the MMO adventure aspects much uh-huh. more. Also, I really like this past episode. The CG was really good. Yeah, they did a good job. Uh, was there was really a, there good. was a shot of him like have, I think it was him walking into the woods, and it yes. was clearly like a model. Yeah, but like. And, and but when I looked at it, I was like, "Well, this is actually composted like really well. Um, like it looked, it looked really good. good. It looked even good. when he fought when they were fighting the um, fuck, not the 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 pig thing. Yeah, the little pig thing with the spikes on yeah. it. It's like Ramis from League of Legends. If y'all play League yes. of Legends, it's like Ramis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when he was fighting that thing, a lot of that stuff was CG, and I was like, "This looks." good it, you know you know why it looked fine because there were a lot of like cuts like different shots mm. so you never really like had to stare at the same the like, to model, find all the places like, just, yeah. right like when he, like you you can see it when um he pulls out the spear it's like him head on but mm. it's like a little on the dark side and you're mostly focused on the weapon okay a lot out. of it was dark a right lot and then, of it, it, then it, it, yeah and then it cuts to another shot of him like winding up to throw, but like you're more paying attention to the dialogue. And then it it that fight kind of ends abruptly into a gag. And so you, by the time you're done with the whole scene, you had a good experience. You just didn't stare at it. Yeah. To be like, okay, here's the part that's like, yeah, there was no moment janky. of like power up, like wide shot panorama thing. It was just move, 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 move. All like I said, like right. That. Um, um, so what's funny is that you said that the half that you would get rid of is a slice of life, and I'm thinking the half I would get rid of is almost the isekai. <laughs> nah, I can't, I can't. But I I'll tell you why. No, no, so- I and I agree with I agree with everything that you just said. And the funny part is, I don't think we're gonna actually disagree. It's just where we put the value. So mm-hmm. the best episode that I think this show has had was probably like it, it was episode two or three where he did the modeling in the mall. Yeah. Oh, would he fucking slam that nigga? Yeah, I think that from like a writing perspective and just like something interesting that I had not seen and did not expect the series to do, I had the best time with that episode because the end takeaway was that you should respect people in professions that you typically overlook. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, everybody there was a professional. Yes, they had to have a moment where, like, he looks good against the, the slacker model who shows up late and is an asshole and is hitting on the girl. I'm like, that, that's all fine. But if I remove that part from the episode, it was actually, like, a really neat character exploration. Our main character is not adjusted yes. to the fact that, like, he's very, very good looking. He is completely out of his depth in you know, the in what social we environments, like normal social environments. There's some good, like funny jokes, like those two girls who try to hit on him. And like, he literally does not know what to do. And even though, and they're left I, there I, enamored. Yeah. And then she said the one of the girls is like, is this, is this the birth of like a gap Moe? And I was like, Oh fuck. They're actually referencing that in the show. That's hilarious. Cause he turned them down. And they were even yeah. more into him. They're like him turning me down. Is even is even hotter than I thought he would be if I went on a date with him. 
So I thought that was that was really good. All the other characters, including um, the model girl who shows up in Mio the latest Mio, episode, whatever her name is, yeah. right? They they were like they were sweet. It was like they, it yes. was cool. Like everything about it was very well. I'm balanced. more interested in anything in the woman at the end of the model episode who was like, "Find this nigga." Yeah, I, I gotta get him. this dude. Right? That's but a whole other story. People, right? This. Some people are surmising that that's his mom. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Because the Could parents be. haven't seen him. And True. The, oh, okay. Actually, on that note, I... Talk about the siblings. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So I actually thought the brother's like neck was going to get cracked. Yo, I was like, yeah, just fuck that nigga up. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? And honestly, I wasn't very happy with the... I haven't forgiven you, but you're still my sibling. No, fuck them niggas. Get them out of here. Be like, nigga, you invited delinquents to the school. When the delinquents first came to the school, they swang bats at the people who were on the field. Yes, like they were sweet. Right. I was like, them niggas was going to hurt a way more people than just your fucking brother. Exactly. Dude, Contextually, like, it makes no sense. Yeah. The, 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 like the actual, that, that, that. That part jumped the shark for me almost immediately mm. because it was like, we're just looking for ways to contrast our main character's greatness mm-hmm. with the failures now, uh, that everyone else has. So I felt like it was totally unnecessary, but I think you or I, if we sat down and I said, okay, here's the writing prompt. The writing prompt is everything that happened up until that point in the story of this show. Now we want to bring in like a gang attack with the brothers to get back. There's a better way to frame that other than just a bunch of motherfuckers on bikes ride into the middle of school yes. from another yes. decade. And try to beat people up. The main character jumps out the window with superpowers and literally goes 1v1 with a guy with, 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 a, with a motorcycle after wiping out the whole gang in like lightning speed. That's a trope that exists in this type of, you know, uh, yeah. audience insert, like, superpowered main character re reincarnate. Like, we, we've done this. This happened before, but there's a more tasteful way to put that together, which I was annoyed by because in the previous episode, we got a very tasteful, yes. like, slice of life type moment, which yeah. you do. It did all of the tropes. Every He's hot. Oh, he gets scouted to be a model. Oh, the the guy who was supposed the to be there was a big gay. Yes, there's a, right. Like everything about it was like you know very cliche, but they managed to pull out of that something I think really was interesting and I liked and served all the characters well and set up for stories. Gave us another hot girl to be looking at, which is like the other thing we should just mention that the main reason to watch this is just to look at the very attractive designs of the women. Like it's just my main reason is I want to see that a nigga use the scythe. I yeah, I, I well, want that's him true. To yeah he did pull that scythe that didn't use it. Yes. I was like you had that scythe since the fucking first episode and you ain't used that shit nigga. I need I mean, I've said this. So the so the, the Isekai the reason why to get back to my main point which was the reason why <laughs> like I could I could lose the Isekai bit is not because I think it's bad or that they did anything wrong with it is that there's just not enough there for me yet that I wanted I, after that first episode where we saw systems we saw items we saw everything else it's more or less stayed confined to just the world of that forest and then the mansion of the princess and that's literally it. You know, we have another helper and the dog, which is another cute animal yeah. thing to deal with. And that's that's cool. But in the opening, I saw like there was like a like I saw all kinds of stuff in the opening that led me to believe that there was going to be more development of what the is going on on the. Because yeah. I thought like, was there like a rabbit or something that was there's like a ra- a, there's clearly a rabbit character because I noticed that thing every week in the opening and the ending. There's a, clearly yeah. a rabbit character that's going to be I don't know if it's a mentor, but it's definitely stronger than him and going to train so, him in some form. So of I thought actually from the opening that what was going to happen was is the he no no that he'd find himself on the isekai side under duress. That is to say, like he's overpowered, oh. but there's something about like that system in that world where he goes up. The rabbit is right there, kind of tells him like. You know, bro, do this, do that, yeah, do this yeah. or you're going to die or do this or bad things are going to happen. So some ticking pressure to get him to like get out and have to balance this life between going to the other world and then also trying to live a like a, a slice of life t- style thing at home. Because ironically enough, you know what series did this that wasn't an isekai? It was the re- it was the remake of Spriggan on Netflix. Oh. The whole 
concept is that say uh say is uh not say what is what's his name I was I was thinking like from Setsuda F. Say from uh, oh Gundam. from but the uh, main, Gundam, yeah yeah but the main character in Spriggan is this like high powered like um secret agent Double who deals with Gundam. like all Double these like lost technology things and he's like a super soldier right but that but like so you get three quarters of an episode where he's out on a mission doing something and then like a quarter of the episode where he has to like go back to school and have a normal school and, life like, where the nobody school, knows the school pre- the class president is charging his ass up you're like you skip too many days blah, exactly blah, blah, blah. right yeah. like that that concept of like fantastical overpowered you know I wonder, fantasy wait, what is the second part of that coming out i know it's, there's it more. is coming it's 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 under development i want more coming. i really enjoyed that shit yeah you know what i mean so like that we did this it, that's what the that's what Spriggan was. Um, so, but Spriggan just did it. Well, actually, Spriggan had a longer runtime per episode. Oh, absolutely. So, like, there was there's so many re- differences and yeah, all the, like that character was already established in that world yeah. when the audience when gets we to came them. into it. Yeah, right. So I had expected that rabbit to sort of be like a kind of um, almost like maybe even like a menacing force. Like in a lot of these returner alternate world stories they'll they'll be like a cute administrator yeah. who's like actually running like the death game or running like you know whatever so the fact that we've got no pressure on him to really get out and do anything is why i'm like i could do, if you told me tomorrow they just cut all the you know all of the fantasy aspect and it's just he got overpowered and came back and now he's hot and like it's pushed everything else is pushed then the that would have for me it would have the romance stuff would have to be like ex- really good flaw, like yeah. really good like yes no, i agree i agree with you yeah. yeah no i think I, I think i totally agree with everything you're saying i'm just saying that like the best episode that i've seen so far was an episode that was the slice of life stuff done really well oh that that's that's the only argument i'm making here is that like based on those five four or five episodes like i liked one of the slice of life attempts way more than i liked any other individual thing that was done yeah and And it might never get to be that good ever again like i laughed out loud when uh the the girl um cowrie was like realized that she had another person to fend off and like the look on her face the way they drew her was like how you would draw the homely homely anime homely uh, like b- uh, girl next door. Yeah. But like, re- I also recall that in episode like two, she's like the hottest girl ever. Like everyone in the series acknowledges. Yeah, when this- they were having ice cream and shit, everyone was like, "Yes." Ooh, and now all of a sudden, like she's the she's somebody's mom. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, it just yeah. it it's it's a it's a fun watch. Um. I don't know if it has the potential to be much more than that, but I'm enjoying it for what it is, and I have been keeping up with it on a weekly basis. It's a, it's on the I like this, and I'm gonna watch it when it comes out list. Like it's yeah. easy, it's easy. But I'm to not do raving that. about this shit. To uh, nobody. No, no, I mean, no, except no. for y'all. But <laughs> You're right. Um, so I have a question. Mm-hmm. Have you had any opportunity to check out Kamikatsu? No, is that the one where like the the god he's trying to spread the word of the god or like there are no yeah. gods did no. we did we talk about the debut no we episode? didn't you you told me about it when the first episode dropped but we hadn't recorded so Sex. unironically my top three for this season so far what uh, very obviously for so oh my god for different reasons um it, it's it's witch from mercury yeah Hell's Paradise, yeah. and now I'm realizing it's Kamikatsu. It's stuck what its the way fuck in there. is going on in this show? Oh my, because that was this was another one of the stock isekai that you had talked about in the previous yes. episode, where you were like, these three could be one show and it would be good. Yes. So I take back that assertion about Kamikatsu because nothing can intersect with this one. This oh. is its own. It's its own thing that I exists on an is island it all by itself. It. It is, but I would actually say specifically it's satire. Um, oh. Cultural satire and religious satire. That's that's what it is. Okay. So the premise of Kamikatsu is that the main character was born the son of a cult leader in Japan, like in our world. Oh, okay. And his dad is like a super successful cult leader in the sense that they've got like hundreds of thousands church. of followers right but it's a very specific kind of cult that seems to be based around like 
extreme uh, fitness and like all the things that like we're as we're learning as we get the backstory all of the things that like scummy scam cults do to like make money get popular this cult has done and his dad as the leader of this cult this hereditary cult um is, is like the master of so when you meet his dad he's like fucking huge jacked out of his mind he's got like the tiny little black sunglasses and like the 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 buddha robes and like the everything else and we meet them in the process of him and his cult literally sacrificing his own son to the ocean on the premise that um god will perform a miracle and you know get him out of the situation meanwhile main character has grown up hating everything about his like yeah. living in this world and the fact that his father it seems like actually weirdly enough father's a great dad very encouraging very like whatever but dead set on his son becoming the leader the of this cult leader. like after he dies so like training him and drilling him and everything and the and the the main character just doesn't like it like he doesn't like the the physical fitness shit he doesn't give a fuck about that he knows it's all the scam even though his father is probably a true believer all the people around him are true Wait, believers. oh my like, god he, is this going in the is this going where I think it is where like he reincarnates he reincarnates into the another uh, he reincarnates in the new world and uses all that shit to get this guy Exactly. To, oh, but it, it's deeper okay. because on in the real world there's no evidence that like God exists. So he's yeah. basically an atheist and doesn't believe at all in any of this shit. So he dies or he he gets close to death, he gets somehow isekai'd to this new place and immediately something's up because he's in a village and all the people in the village are just instantly like, oh, yeah, it's cool. You can stay here. It's no problem. And he's just like, wait, I don't I, This is clearly a whole other world. Yeah. I don't know any of you. Like, why Why are y'all cool with me just being here? But because he's dangerously genre savvy, he's like, oh, I've been isekai? Bet. That must mean that I'm the main character. I'm the hero. I'm going to get, like, a superpower. And there's there's got to be, like, quests. There's got to be, like, sh- shit here. And he's like, all right, I'm in, a, I'm in the starting village. So it's a bunch of people farming. So I bet you if I just like do the task that they're doing in the village, I'll get some ability or I'll get like stronger or pop up. Mad months pass. All he does is farm. Nothing happens. Oh. And he's just there. But like, he's like, fuck. Okay. So none of this is, so it's not what I thought. I'm in another world, but like, I'm not getting any powers. I'm not stronger than anybody else. This shit sucks. Yeah. But at least I do know some things like how to cultivate the fruit and turn it into liquor. And so the whole village, he becomes popular in the village because he taught them how to make booze. And they're all getting drunk every day. And it's like, everything's cool. But something's still weird because he hasn't seen anybody from any other villages. They talk about, like, the city, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And he's made friends with some of the villagers. They're weird, but, like, hey, we're all getting drunk together. It's cool. So one day, they have to take some of the shit that they sell to the to the city. And he's like, yo, let me, let me tag along. And they get to the city and instantly the people around him are looking at him like yo you're fucking disgusting what the fuck are you like all the people from the village he's with they're getting like the they're getting the the scarlet letter treatment like it's fucking weird and but no one's explaining what's going on he gets to the center of the city and he sees like a crowd and it's like oh what's what, what's happening yeah, here? There's a bunch like of people on a right? stockade yeah and it turns out that in this world or at least in this country in this world after you turn a certain age you're just executed oh they just kill you so is everyone younger than him i mean they're they're the pe- all the people in the village are young he asked starts asking questions turns out the village is a place for weirdos people who don't follow the rules or have other like oh. weird aspects of them and that we don't know this yet but there are actually multiple villages where the city basically deports all the shitty people uh but anybody could show up from the city and be like, okay, your time is up. Y'all got to die. And so oh. ultimately he gets back to the village and finds out that his friends, some of his friends have been rounded up and they're all going to be executed. At which point he goes, chases them down, tries to rescue them, gets fucked up, basically gets insta killed uh, in the process. Cause he has no like yeah. special powers. And as he's dying, he's got like the thing that his father gave him. That's like the symbol of the God that they worship on the other side. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, for the first time in his life, is like, you know, I don't care what happens. I want to save my friends who have been executed already, mind you. We've already seen them die. But he wants them. To, he wants to bring them back. And so he summons that god 
into this other world and they have powers that nobody has ever seen before straight up like oh. swallows like 50 soldiers whole like annihilates them what the brings god the does two, yeah brings them back brings the other people back to life and gets them out of the city back to the village but like weirdly nobody follows them and you find out at that point that like the god didn't realize that they were in another world so they use all their power to like do that one thing and now they have none left and the only way to for the village to survive is to increase the number of followers that the god has in order to give them the same powers the miracle powers to defend them. that can pro- yeah that can protect them against some seriously overpowered shit that's happening like in the so okay. because religion doesn't exist in this world magic doesn't exist in this world like none of this shit he has to use all of the scammy <sighs> tactics that he was taught by his father to build a religion for the first time that's all centered around this god so that they can a keep everybody from dying but b potentially get him back home but they're starting from zero because they use all their power to do the miracles in the first place yeah stupidly and so there's so that's the setup that's the that's what the story is about but in the process of that a, it's like 100% comedy because all the characters are batshit insane. The main character is like actually just an evil person because he, <laughs> he because he doesn't he has no moral prescriptions about anything. Like he will deceive, he will lie, he will steal, he will cheat, he will do anything it takes to just like get out of the situation. Um, he doesn't actually believe in God anyway, even though the, a, a literal yeah. God showed up in front of him. He's not even counted as a follower of that God. Because he doesn't truly believe in them. It's just like, this is just a means to an end. And they each episode, each couple episodes, is kind of like walking down a series of tactics that are used by scam religions in order to grow. So they do things well, like, you know... this is great, because aren't there a lot of scam religions in Japan? There are a lot of scam religions. And in fact, it's kind of just a critique of religion. Not okay. just like, not just like cults. Um, but every time they kind of hit a plateau of like how many followers they have, or the or are they are the followers worshiping in the right way? Like, because at first it's like, okay, we make booze, so if we say that only followers of the religion can come into the only bar in town and get drunk, uh. you'll get a lot of people who will be like, yeah, sure, whatever, I'll do it for that. Or like, I can use the gods' miracles to create modern farming equipment from my world that makes like farming easier, and but then you only can it all. right, yeah. but you can only use these mir- miraculous machines if you come and pray or you do whatever else. So, like, he's doing all kinds of things to, like, build up the power. Meanwhile, we learn that, like, in the city, there are are actual, like, super-powered beings that are used by the emperor or the king who we've never met to, like, control and regulate this system, but they're not using magic, and again, there's no religion. And so one of them shows up, and there's a whole thing, like, there's actual, like, fighting. But... I, I, I talked to someone who actually read the manga. Because remember, the way this show got popular to laugh at was the CGI of this, like, creature. Like, mm-hmm. the really bad, like, buffalo-looking creature everyone was, like, laughing at. Like, yo, this series is cheap. Well, apparently that's on purpose. Like, it's supposed to look like shit. Because it's a gag. The whole thing is a fucking uh... gag. And there's mad, like, bit like 8-bit 2D animation that they hand-put together oh. as well for stuff. So it's very charming... The characters are, like, over the top. There's one guy who's, like, pervertedly... He's, like, the first follower the guy gets for real. But that's because he found out that he had, like, a bondage lolly fetish. Oh! And, like, when the god showed up, he was like, this has awakened something inside of me. I didn't know I had. Oh! <laughs> And you get to see, like, from his mind's eye, like, her, like, beating him or putting her feet on his face. And, like... But he's a complete pervert. And he turns into this pervert over the course of, like... Like, he starts out, like, the normal village... Like, you know, oh, I'm the hot girls are the village. Like, oh, I like the hot girls. And very quickly turns into, like, the arch fiend of all perverts as he... <laughs> okay. Is he's, yes. Okay. okay. Shit is fucking funny. It's okay. absolutely funny. So, okay. All right. I'm in on it. I'm in on it. Wow. Top three. It wow. Because I... Because, again, comedy's there. It doesn't take itself very seriously. Um, the the story is actually relatively interesting, and I don't know what's going to happen next. It's a commentary on religion. It's a commentary on modern Japanese society, Western society as well. And 
there's actually a lot of really great fan service that is played up exactly how it should be as a joke not like like there's a part where like the the one girl who's really into him has been lied to by the god that he's only into girl like flat girls and mm-hmm. she's got like gigantic breasts and so like what she finds what she she believes this and she's like i give up and she goes to try to like chop off her own boobs and it's like a it's like a whole thing like it's absurd you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing about this that is meant to be taken seriously, but the commentary is good. And, like, in the quiet moments, the main character actually does have a very cutting critique of modern society and religion and everything else. So, I'm hmm. like, it's not punching above its weight class, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Okay. So, what else are you watching? Uh, the only. I watched Oshinoko. Everybody go watch Oshinoko. Fucking first episode is an hour and a half. Um,. It is best premiere of the season. Oh, shit. I'll I leave it at it. that. Best premiere of the season. And if you haven't been spoiled by now, great. Go watch it immediately. So good. Like the... it The show... I don't know. Like when you think about... I don't even want to say anymore. I, I go watch it. Go watch it. We'll talk about it after you watch it, James. And I, I want to know what you think. Okay, I will episode. definitely watch it. Next. We'll talk about it. Other than that, I've been watching Yamada Kun, and I've actually been meh about it for the past like two episodes. But this past weekend, um, it wasn't even like the romance part. It was a rival of the main protagonist said that they would meet her somewhere and they actually sent her to meet a fucking man who is a stranger. And the episode almost ended up with her trapped in the bathroom stall with him in the bat in the women's bathroom trying to get into the bathroom Ooh. stall. So yeah, it it it, it it very much so like escalated things. That there were there was no foreshadowing in any previous episode that this show would even get to this level of like scariness. Mm -hmm. But overall, the episode kind of highlighted immaturity because it was a middle schooler who did this to an older woman. But like, they're all in this game trying to like, you know, cohab, not cohab, but like be friends with each other and shit like that. And Mm -hmm. it's more so of a, someone being jealous or being worried of a group dynamic changing and trying to get rid of another person. But it actually ended up being like a sexual assault, um, God damn. Like, um, you know, warning of don't do this shit to people <sighs> because, like, you never, if you don't even know the person, and even if you do know the person, don't send people to meet people like that, especially if they're of the, well, not even if they're the opposite sex because even anybody, if the same don't sex, be yeah, sending nobody to talk to no strangers. Yeah, like, just don't do that. Like, it's, it could end up very badly. So, yeah, I, it actually surprised me this week because it was getting very, very droll and just like, girl. You're pitiful. Move on. Mm. Um, And now it's better. And now the actual, the male protagonist is actually showing something that he wasn't showing in the beginning. So things, characters are evolving. The cast is growing. Honestly, the cast got much better when they introduced like five supporting Mm -hmm. characters who are going to be a part of the show from now on all at once. It skyrocketed as far as just like enjoyment level. But that I think is the only other thing I'm watching right now. I have plans to catch up on Eden Zero, Doctor Stone, um, Eden Zero. But also, I guess the one thing that I do want to say about this season that is markedly different from other seasons is that all of the openings have been phenomenal. Like mm-hmm. almost every opening for shows that I don't even watch have been so good. Um, Death Play Death Game or whatever. How do you say that? That opening, amazing. Skip and Loafers opening, amazing. Wish for Mercury opening, amazing. There are so many. Eden Zeros. And like, they got fucking TM Revolution to come sing that shit. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Like, that. that's that's a lot of money right there. That's a lot of money. Okay, that's a legend. Like, Nana Mizuki level, like, checks. Like, legend singing your shit. Like, Preserve Roses Kakumeki Valve Rave Duet. Like, that nigga, like, singing that shit. So, yeah, a lot of the openings have just been really good, like, music-wise. And um, I'm pleased. It, it makes my subway trip super easy because I just watch all the openings for the entire season. And then by the time I get to the end of the fucking playlist, I'm at work. Yay. But, yeah, that that's about it for me as far as, like, what I'm watching right now. Okay, Do you cool. have anything else? Um, I mean, uh, we probably... 
should at some point talk a little bit more about um, Heavenly Delusion, but I'm back in episode. Oh, yeah, we can um, wait because that'll be th- there's that'll some. Be. I'm really like yeah. all I can just say is a, as a high level thing is that I have really enjoyed this series. It's probably the most confident thing like mm-hmm. from a production standpoint this season. Like, that they know so cool too. they know exactly what story they're trying to tell. It is presented beautifully at almost every level. Like maybe it doesn't have like a single standout audio track but like i think that's a it's a series that lives in a lot of the little moments like in episode three where you just see those shots of the on the farm like people just like singing and dancing and just Mm -hmm. like living it feels like a very like for a a post-apocalyptic weird sci-fi that is like nothing is explained right now like it is the most alive anime space of anything that's currently airing so i just really like that but we'll get around to that later um i'm still following dead mount death play i I'm okay on it at the moment. Um, I'm not totally sure what direction they want to take it at right now, but it's not bad. Um, okay. Certainly not bad. There's a lot of intrigue, and I think the my initial read, um, the, who the main character actually was, um, the fact that it's, the, it's actually the, the necromancer who's presented as a villain and dies in the beginning. Yeah. Or like that, like the who that character really is in this other world is still not clear to me but the only thing i don't like is that for a world that's incredibly brutal and has that like almost you mentioned before like danganronpa influences elsewhere this one a lot of the characters feel like toned down danganronpa characters but in the latest episode we finally started to meet people who might be a threat to the main character Mm -hmm. who is presented just like overpowered in ways that make no sense and I'm hoping with that parody, there's the tension from like the first two episodes comes back because right now a lot of that has gone away. Um, but I'm I'm still following along. Um, okay. I'm not watching Vinland Saga, but that's only because I like it so much that I want to just like sit down in in like a couple of days and like see it together because I yeah. know what happens in the story. So I'm not like if I watch something week to week, it's usually because. I really want to know because I don't know, yeah. or it's like a, a it's like a personal like hit for me where I need whatever they're giving me every week. I am up to date on the Vinland Saga manga, so the story part of it is less interesting. But there's certain moments like I watched the first few episodes and I was like, okay, I got the stuff with like Thor Thorgil, and I'm like, all right, we're good for a while. So I'll probably catch up on the rest of that one okay. at a later date. Um, and that's pretty much all I am watching. I will watch Oshinoko, though, because people have been going ham about that one, and I think probably deservedly so. Yes. Um, news-wise, I don't really have anything news-wise. Do you have anything? Um, I mean, I guess it's sort of, like, uh, news ad- adjacent to anime. Like, we got the Armor Core, um, oh, trailer. Yeah, I'm hoping. That was gorgeous. I'm hoping beyond hope that they have done some things to make it more accessible because I love Armored Core. I'm a big fan, but it's one of those series like Dark Souls before it that needed uh, needed there to be an entry that wasn't quite as stat driven. And I, I watched the trailer and I watched the interview with the lead designer and I'm mm-hmm. very confident that they've learned a lot from the uh, from Elden Ring about how to take ah. all the good stuff in that formula and make it accessible. And top of that, it's it's going to be somewhat open world. So if you liked Elden Ring and you want like Elden Ring with Mecha, it's not just going to be a reskin. It looks like it's going to be melding of those two things. Ooh. Um, and I'm I now really that sounds see interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um. So there's that. Uh, oh, I guess nothing. what Mushoku Tensai is coming back this summer. Really excited. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. Can't wait for that one. Um, other than that, nothing much. I know there's some Netflix series that are kind of debuting oh. this month. My Netflix is so skewed by Korean dramas. <laughs> I feel like yeah, yeah right. That, that's a any, that, that's a great point. Day. Like it's hard to like doing like I don't think Netflix is like pretty good at pushing its own stuff. But mm-hmm. when it comes to, like, if there's one genre that you like that you haven't already, like, spec'd your entire Netflix recommendation list to give you more of that, yeah. it is really bad at, like, exposure. Especially for the anime part of its, yes. like, portfolio. It's really bad. Um, so, 
Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much about it. Um, okay, well then we will move on to recommendations. So uh, for this week, I feel like you guys should like know this is coming because what just fucking got released this week. But um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed. I mean, look at the review scores. Phenomenal. So good. Also, um, it th- this is what DLC should be for fucking games. Also, mm-hmm. I feel like it, I'm recommending... Well, I recommend games all this kind of time anyway. But, like, I know that you said that, like, part of the reason why you weren't really enjoying Cineblade 3 was because it was, like, very, like, anime tropey esque and things like that. Which Future Redeemed pretty much kind of is, but it's not to the same level as 3. I think Future Redeemed does a really good fucking job of uh, rewarding the people who have played all three games. Like, mm. there is something for the Xenoblade 1 people who love Xenoblade 1, there is something for the people who love Xenoblade 2, and there is something for the people who love Xenoblade 3. And the way that they meld it all together is so fucking good. Like, I never would have thought Rex of all the people would come... Just like what? they aged him up, right? He's cool looking now. He's cool looking now, and he's way more complex and interesting. Like, mm. oh my god! Like what they're doing with he and Shulk, and the way that they are—you, you literally are learning the epilogues of the first two games through playing this game. Mm-hmm. And I like—I'm really enjoying it because it makes you want to see every single affinity scene and things like that. Because they—they they start talking about things that you know are after the story, and you're like, "Ooh, oh, that's what they did. Oh, that's how they went in this." And da 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 da. So it's literally mm-hmm. bridging the gap between like the years between the end of those games and the beginning of three. Um, and expounding upon it. Also, we still—I still have no idea who the fuck Riku is. God damn it! But also, the black voice actor who voices him is doing a phen- phenomenal job. That nigga is so funny. Um, and then my second video game recommendation of this week is—and you all should have definitely seen this coming. And I have to say, like, this is this is this is on the top of my list. Honkai Imp- Honkai Star Rail is so good and i'm not just saying it's good gameplay wise these niggas literally like took think about all of the like shit posting (laughs) shit from the internet and put it into a character oh that's funny and put it in the fucking story this shit is so fucking funny the the main character has an obsession with trash cans like you can just like you can like if you like click on trash cans and then the great part about it is like the accompanying supporting cast is like oh fuck here you go with these trash cans again god damn mm. it stop doing this shit you're embarrassing us in public blah 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 and then you also have the whole the whole other options of just the your character can be completely like gray like straightforward protagonist or they can be an absolute chaotic fucking fiend and it is so much fun. And also, it's super anime as fuck. Like the the animated cutscenes with the bosses and shit like that, they go off. They're great. The story's pretty interesting. Um, and they haven't done anything with like time travel at all. And I don't think they will be. But <laughs> I just really enjoy it because I think they learned a lot of the lessons that people were complaining about with Genshin as far as like story pacing, um, uh, silent protagonist, like actually having voice lines, even though you are pretty much in control. And the characters and the combat, the combat is so much fucking fun. And you don't, it's one of those games where like, It's a team builder kind of game where you can play a lot of the game on auto and um, you can do a lot of shit. But the challenge comes into like when auto starts failing, like nonstop. And you're like, how do I rebuild this? Do I build this other character? Do I bring this into it? How do I progress past this point, et cetera, et cetera. And overall, I have put way too much time into both of those games this weekend. But if you want something to feed your weeb side... Video game wise, both of those are great, especially Honkai. Honkai is just, God, it's so, so surprisingly good. I really thought it was just going to be another like Genshin, like this is Genshin, but space. It's like, actually, like we have uh, these like beings that are connected to the classes and then you have the elements on top of the classes and then you're just, like, there's a, 
There's a full, like, fleshed out story that is constantly being told to you all around you. It's like the the narrative is much more of a focus in this game as opposed to, like, the exploration aspect of Genshin. So, thoroughly enjoying it. Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. That's what's up. No, I'm not, uh, you know, I was not in that group of games with Honkai Impact and Genshin yeah, and yeah. everything else, but, like, I know how... Uh, big they are and that the people yeah. who embrace all the tropes and everything else are getting fed right now oh yeah and and i can't i can't be mad at that again like this is you know this is candy for weebs it so looks, I say, you, yeah yeah I just they say, know their audience they know I would their just audience. Say, i would just say eat that shit up um i think for me the big game release of the last week has to be uh, Monster Hunter Sunbreak on Xbox and P. Well, it was already on. Was it on PC? Yeah, it's on PC. Yeah, it's been out on. Yeah, so on, on, yeah, PC, so on, yeah. on Xbox because playing that game, you know, on a TV on a game console, but in high res with like almost no load times mm. or minimal load times, is just like such a refreshing experience. I got Compared some homies around that. Switch. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, it's just it was too uh, the waiting waiting in like lobbies and shit was just killing me. Um, still have some issues with like um, finding like joining games, but mm-hmm. it's I've been waiting on it. I, I got my character back up where I need to be um, to be ready for the expansion. How the master the master rank? How the hunts go in? Oh, I'm almost uh, master rank six, so I've mm, I've gotten okay. through a lot of the new yeah. content. I I really enjoy it. Um, I've not. I yet like screened. fighting Luna Garen. That thing is. Fun. Yeah, yeah. I've not yet like uh, I, I beat Malzino. I'm kind of. Mm. you know piddling along to the next major um to yeah, like the, the boss of the expansion yeah, yeah. matt was it malgram or whatever that however you pronounce it like yeah. i'm probably a couple of couple of like uh, uh tears away from and that that, that, a... that fight is really fun like i enjoyed yeah. that fight a lot more than the narwa what was the... narwa yeah i fucking hate narwa and ibushi yeah, like both of I didn't like those, but um, the the main monster from like the base version of World, like that oh, thing, um, I forgot what it was called. Fuck, but, which one was in World? But the, like the blue one, the blue yes, one, I know what yeah, you're talking and then about. like the arena. Yeah. Um, it reminded me of that one, but it just had well, you'll pl- you'll play it, you'll play it. But I yeah, enjoyed yeah, no. this. I enjoyed this final boss. I think more than any of the ones that they've done so far on like the home consoles and PC. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. So I'm I'm also a big fan. So that, from a gaming perspective, has sort of taken up a lot of my time. Um, but from re- for recommendations, I'm not ready to fully recommend this yet, but I've had a fun time so far with a series called um, God's Web Novel. So one of my complaints, having like consumed so much mm. manhwa in now the last, what is this about? like oh, fifty boy. or sixty years, is that like fifty years, fifty sixty um, <laughs> series in the last fifty or sixty series in the last year? Yeah. Um, that you sort of see that there are very clearly defined tropes and concepts that get reused over and over again. You've got your returner stories. You've got your cultivator stories. That's like the Morim martial arts stuff. You've got your straightforward isekai. And then you've got sort of like, um, you know, villain, villainess, semi-romance. Sometimes I'll throw in some other features in there. That's probably about the strength of it. Those are maybe some like, you know, straight up fantasy adventures. But those are few and far between these days. But one that's gotten, one like genre that's gotten a lot of interest is the um, fourth wall breaking um i'll call them like the webtoon web novel becomes real sort of tales and oftentimes yeah, the structure yeah, yeah, of that yeah, yeah, is yeah. i wrote a book isn't that it like sucked. isn't that you what you i know you said some om, omniscient reader is kind of like similar omniscient in, in reader game. is similar he didn't write in, it though he didn't write it so the yeah. core mystery is actually who wrote it yeah because it was about a book that he was the only person reader, to finish yeah. So, but the inverse of that is the author then gets thrown into a story. You said there was another one that you read that was a similar story to that, but like the co-author had changed it. Yes. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a couple out there. This one is somewhat of a refreshing take on that concept where a, 
you you don't know or learn anything about the main character in the very first chapter other than they have been transported into a story but it's not a story they were reading it's not a story that they wrote instead it's a story that's being written actively by a god but the oh. but the sort of trick is that god already decided the setting but is very bad at writing so the main character is sort of co-writing the story with them as it goes because if they fail to do so the entire th- that character and the entire world will be annihilated um like getting canceled right so they have to come up with a story that's entertaining to other godly readers oh. but they can't but neither one of them and in particular the main character cannot do anything that would break the setting that was already put in place which he does not necessarily know very much about. So it's very interesting because in, it's a story about, it's like, you know, it's your very typical overpowered, you know, uh, uh, quasi isekai story, but it's also third wall breaking in the sense that the, the subject and the author are able to communicate with each other uh-huh. inside of the story. But it's also fourth wall breaking because a lot of the, the uh, concerns that the main character has and the challenges are the result of things that you as a reader of these types of stories would be familiar with. Right. And also the fact that nothing exists in this story until somebody writes it. And so that means that, for example, when the main character wakes up and is in, is sort of uh, thrown into a situation where Uh, A thug is breaking down the door because the body that he's inhabiting owes that character money. The actual settings for the character who is the thug do not exist until he either thinks of them in real time, which can be seen both by you, the reader, reading it, and the god who is monitoring him and filling in the gaps. There are multiple cases in the first five chapters where whole characters get rewritten on the fly inside of the story in order to fit either something that the main character was thinking about to get them out of a situation, or they accidentally thought about because they were reminded of something that they knew about in the real world. Uh And I think that, like, playing with all of those expectations that you have as a... It is! And and on top of that, it still has to be, like, pretty funny, and the art style is pretty good, and, you know, you have to... Or is it a collaboration? I, I don't know, in fact. I'm not I'm not totally sure. Um, but it's only got like six or seven chapters out in the wild, so I don't want to oh. really give I don't want to say like, oh, this is like a, a must read or anything. But just as a, it's a concept. Good start. Yeah, I think it's got a really it's got a fun concept that can play with the tropes, acknowledge that that's literally what it's doing, and then subvert them in the ways that are just fresh enough that you'll be like, oh, this is not an experience that I've commonly had reading without necessarily like trying to do too much. Like, they ain't reinventing the genre. There's yeah. nothing here that's like... Like, an example was uh, uh, the main character has a throwaway... Uh, he's trying to, like, convince his thug that he just beat up to go get his money plus interest. And the guy's like, oh, well, where th- if I'm getting money from you, why would you think I have money to give you? Like, I'm broke, motherfucker. Like, yeah, you t- what you gonna do? And then he's thinking to himself, like, well, this is like a sort of fantasy setting. Like maybe there's something crazy, like goblin loan sharks you could borrow money from. And then the god is like listening to him think, and it's like, oh, that's actually a really cool idea. That'll oh. get the readers excited. So now this world isn't just martial arts and and like fantasy, you know, returner stuff. Like We're also gonna do a monster. worlds collide thing where there's like fantasy races in the world, and in this world, goblins are bankers. And it's like what <laughs> and then he walks outside and as the world is getting built in front of him a uh, like a a sign like a roadside sign pops up that's like an ad for a credit card that is go- <laughs> like you know goblins hawking the gold credit card with no interest to people in that world and it's months. like <laughs> right exactly so all that shit is really cute now i don't know if it will hold up as like a you know, an interesting story long term. It could just be a very strong um, premise that doesn't have any substance behind it. Trust me, I have read now dozens of those, so <laughs> I, I wouldn't put it past anyone to um, maybe want to wait and check it out later and see where it develops in a year. 
I will come back to this because okay. that's usually about long enough for something to happen. Um, so that's about as close as I can get to a a recommendation there. Okay. Um, I but I think also Suicide Hunter came back with a rebrand because they can't call it Suicide Hunter. Uh, Makes sense. <laughs> so we'll. So I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So that's it. That's all I got. Uh, I think we Ooh. move on to the question of the week. Yeah, so what's um, the question of the week for this week, then? So this week's question, y'all may have seen me holding this up around. I just got a some new merch drop. This is Beat is from that? Jet Set Radio. Oh, as a, oh as that a game! That game is supposed to be coming out. That's okay, but yeah. Yep. HG Remaster. So this is uh, some companion merchandise, but I found it. And I thought, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And my question to the audience is... What is the best piece of merchandise that you've ever bought? Not seen, something that you decided to come out of pocket for. It could be as mundane and as a t-shirt that you thought had a cool design. It could be some super expensive statue that you bought. It could just be something that has sentimental value that goes back to other series or a moment that you really loved. I have uh, a lot of random stuff around me. My desk is filled with things. I've got Custom my- Custom Nico Robin pen. Right, I've got my chaos. That's nice. I like that. I got Geralt. I've got um, a very expensive Mecha Godzilla. Oh. That, from what it is, it should not be as expensive as it was. I was just wandering uh, around New York City actually, and there was a shop that uh, had almost no like like anime, gaming, movie stuff. They had was like regular toys, and then up in the corner was just Mecha Godzilla. And I was so intrigued. I was like, "Why do you just have this?" I was like, can I just buy that? And the guy looked at it and was like, uh, yeah, I guess it's a uh, it's hundred bucks. I was like, fuck. Cause I already had him like take it down. Yeah. And now I'm like, and my, my, my wife was there and I was like, I guess I can afford <laughs> this hundred dollar Godzilla statue. Fucking <sighs> but I love it actually. It lives on my desk. Um, I've got like plenty of stuff back there. So I think that my, my favorite piece of merch is actually, uh, I have the, um, the the set that came with the Halo Reach Collector's Edition, that panel, oh. that diorama of all of the uh, of the Spartan team. Um, it's missing some pieces, but like it's I, I I wanted it when it came out, and I could not afford it. I was on like you know college student uh, college student money, so I was not not taking Collector's Edition anything at that point in my life. But I came across it in a store um, like literally a couple of years ago. And I was shocked that they were selling it for like 50 bucks. And I was like, it, it, was, it was like missing a couple pieces, but I was like, I always wanted this. Yeah. So that's like probably my my single favorite piece of merchandise. That's like like licensed stuff. So, you know, whatever it is for you guys, please let us know. There's a story behind it. That would be fun to go over. But, you know, whatever floats your boat, whatever you think is um, best in your opinion. I think that's Okay. Best. Fun and show us, show pictures. Yeah, please show pictures. Sh- show us pictures. We can put. If you're on YouTube, answers. you can just describe it to us. But yeah, yeah, you can describe it. You can send us the picture on Twitter or whatever, or to the yeah. the email. But okay, all right. Well, that is it for this week. So if you haven't already, follow us on Anime Underscore Savants on Twitter. We're trying to get on Blue Sky. If you're on Blue Sky already, send us a code. Send us a code. But. Yeah, Anime Regular Savants on uh, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Um, If you see the YouTube TikToks, or not the YouTube TikToks, the YouTube Shorts, let us know if those are appearing before the episode or after the episode. That would help us out so much. And yeah. Cool. All right. Um, Other than that, you can hit me up on Twitter, at Neural Handshake. Um, I'm keeping it nice and breezy lately. Yeah. uh, Summer's here. Please, 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 please. All Uh, right. Yep. Other than that, that's it. All right. Bye. Peace out.